Hello everybody, my name is Peter Robak and I come from the Elmer team at CSC. This presentation is about mesh generation for Elmer. So I shortly tell how to get meshes into Elmer and what other things to consider uh, about the meshes. So how do we get the mesh into Elmer? We have several different options and the main main ones are here. So we can use native format of Elmer Grid. You see this in many, many tests. Uh, however, this is recommended only for very simple structured meshes. And uh, the reason why this is used in many tests is, is economics and uh, the fact that this is the only mesh generator that always comes with Elmer. Uh, Elmer GUI also has some built-in mesh generators such as TetGen and NetGen libraries but their control through Elmer GUI is very limited. So uh, Elmer GUI is more like educational user interface, not really a proper user interface if you want to mesh complicated structures. So inevitably you will have to often use external mesh generators. Uh, and some of these support native format of Elmer, but for most you must use Elmer Grid to transform the mesh into Elmer format. Uh, there is also the possibility to use some internal features of Elmer Solver to finalize the mesh. So this involves, for instance, mesh extrusion and mesh multiplication. But of course, here you need some initial mesh to start the work with. Here are some mesh generation software that are known to work with Elmer. Uh, on the open source side, we have several alternatives. Gmesh, very well-known uh, open source mesh generator. NetGen, also well-known, maybe not as popular, but still worth a look. Uh, Salome and FreeCAD, two CAD-oriented user interfaces that also can produce meshes for Elmer and also both have direct user interface to Elmer. Uh, on the commercial side, we of course have also many alternatives. GID is relatively inexpensive and has also an add-on module that can directly write Elmer format. Comsol Multiphysics, uh, often used for similar applications as Elmer, and Elmer can read the MPH text format, and uh, therefore this may be also used as a preprocessor for Elmer. Hypermesh is known uh, to work with Elmer. Uh, you can export uh, meshes in UMV format and uh, read them using Elmer Grid. So there are many formats that can be used. Uh, if Elmer suit does not provide uh, uh, in import functionality for your specific format, you may still always ask because writing a parser from, for ASCII meshes is not often that big a deal. So it takes maybe just a few hours to do that. We have a permanent poll at the Elmer FM discussion forum about what mesh generation tools people like to use. Here the clear winner is Gmesh, which is used by almost half of the people. Then the as clear second place is Salome, which is used by 20% and roughly 10% share is for Elmer GUI, NetGen and Elmer Grid. The others get just a few random votes. So it would seem that Gmesh is a good place to start if you want to start meshing for Elmer. Uh, as Elmer Grid is often used in importing the files into Elmer world, here is the basic operation that you need to carry out that task. So the short syntax is that you give Elmer Grid command and then some parameters. The first parameters is the magic number for the input format. The second parameter is the magic number for the output format. And then the third one is the mesh name. And then you can have a number of parameters. Uh, the mostly used input file formats comes with the magic numbers 1, 8 and 14 and are 
Elmer Grid file format, Universal Mesh file format, and GMesh format. Whereas for output, you would typically use uh, Mesh format number two. So this is the Elmer Solver format, that is the one that is used to compute stuff with Elmer Solver. You could also use, for instance, uh, output format 5 to inspect how your mesh looks like. So you can read it in, in Paraview and look how your mesh looks like or how the partitioning look, looks like before making the actual computations. Uh, you can always get instructions of Elmer Grid uh, by giving the command without any parameters. This is often handy because many people don't remember the magic numbers by heart. Gmesh is the most popular uh, mesh generation tool used with Elmer. Uh, it's fast, it's light, uh, it has a nice uh, scripting language, also it can be used uh, graphically, and uh, all in all it suits very well the academic user profile of Elmer. Uh, when you use Gmesh with Elmer, uh, you can either uh, save everything, and that means that uh, you will get all the edges, or all, all the control points, etc. And then you should use the autoclean flag. So the syntax then is that you say Elmer grid, then 14 for the magic number of Gmesh, and 2 for the magic number of Elmer mesh format and then the name of the gmesh mesh and then auto clean this is something that you would use if you have saved everything uh, if you decide to define the physical entities in gmesh and want to use those numbers also in elmer then you would not use this auto clean but then you should be careful that you define uh, all the physical entities both for bodies and boundaries And um, nowadays this works for versions 2, uh, 4, 4.1, I hope for all current versions. If you need uh, to work with cat geometries, then Salome could be your uh, choice of tool. So it's a nice open source software that provides generic platform for pre and post processing of numerical simulations. And it's uh, based on a number of well-known libraries, and it's licensed, of course, under open source. When using Salome with Elmer, uh, you probably want to use the U and V output format. Uh, it is a proven channel to export the meshes from Salome to Elmer. And then the Elmer grid command would be uh, Elmer grid 82, so here the 8 stands for the magic number for the U and V format, and then the file name, and then auto clean if you don't want to maintain the numbering of the initial mesh. You can also open the meshes directly in Elmer GUI. There is a nice feature in, in uh, the U and V format that if the entities have been named, then Elmer grid can try to maintain the names and, and save them to mesh.names file so that if you keep, give a keyword use mesh names in the simulation section, then you can refer in the SIF file to the names of the entities rather than their numbers. This makes the SIF file much more uh, easier to write. There is also a nice plugin provided by the user community that you could use if you end up using Salome. So the uh, Elmer interface in Salome has been written by Rainer Jakob and Matthias Schenker. And uh, it is rather nice because Salome already offers CAD mesh generation and post-processing via Paraview. So with Elmer Solver, it's a full featured set for doing simulations. Uh, and uh, this approach is rather economical because uh, the work directly uses XML files of Elmer GUI. So basically the 
uh, equations are defined with the very same XML files, uh, which means that this is rather easy to keep up to date. If we uh, write new XML files for Elmer GUI, then they can also be used in, in this Salome interface. There is a demo and the code is also available under open source if you want to study it. FreeCAD can also be used with Elmer Solver. So there is a, uh, maybe not as extensive but more limited uh, user interface for Elmer via FreeCAD. It, it involves at least elasticity and uh, and electrostatics, maybe also something else, but these are currently at least included. So you can define the cases in FreeCAD and uh, then make the simulations and uh, visualize it. And uh, this has been done in two different Google Summer of Code projects and, and maybe there is more to come. NetGen can also be used with Elmer. It has been written by Joachim Schöberl mainly, and it can make, make nice 2 and 3D mesh, mesh, meshes that can be directly exported into Elmer format. Unfortunately, uh, currently only linear format is supported. So if you want to use quadratic meshes, then this doesn't work for you, at least out of the box. GID is one commercial code that could be of interest. So it's developed at Chimne Barcelona and uh, it uh, is rather uh, reasonably priced. So it could be a co good compromise between features and price. It uh, enables the creation of hybrid meshes that are maybe not so well supported in some uh, academic mesh generators. There is also a plugin for writing message uh, in Elmer that can be used to directly uh, export the meshes in Elmer format. So here is how uh, Git would work with Elmer. So you have a special plugin that uh, provides the problem type Elmer, and uh, then you can save the meshes in Elmer format directly. And uh, if you are interested in this, you can download the plugin from this given address and also maybe some minimal instructions there. Uh, Elmer includes also some minimal internal mesh generation features. So if you have gotten the mesh into Elmer Solver, then you can internally uh, uh, manipulate it, for instance, you can perform internal mesh division. So basically this means that you split each edge at the halfway. And uh, this means that in 2D, every tri triangle and every quadrilateral element becomes four elements. In 3D, every 3D element becomes eight elements. Uh, this procedure is known as mesh multiplication and you can apply it several times. So starting from a very small mesh, you quickly can come up to very large meshes. This is very handy if your geometry is so simple that uh, the coarsest mesh level can uh, be used to define the geometry. We can also use internal mesh extrusion. So this could be handy if you uh, are working with, for instance, flat geometries. Uh, so you can extrude them to the third direction and uh, get there by three-dimensional meshes. So the idea of this both is that we can remove bottlenecks from mesh generation, because mesh generation may become a bottleneck if you have huge parallel computations, because mesh generation is not often supported in parallel. Of course, these features are limited in generality because the internal meshing features cannot increase the geometric complexity of the of the uh, case. So 
the internal extrusion is especially well suited for computational cluster logic. So there we typically have small aspect ratios in the meshes and uh, we know where the ice is active so we can make an initial footprint and uh, extrude this then to the third direction uh, to get a nice 3D computational mesh. So what kind of meshes can be used then in Elmer? So basically all standard uh, element shapes are supported. So in zero dimensional elements, of course, this is just a point. In 1D, this is element segment. In 2D, we support triangles and quadrilaterals. In 3D, tetrahedrons, wedges, pyramids and hexahedrons. So basically all the standard element shapes. Uh, meshes may also have mixed element types. So you can, for instance, have 3D meshes where you combine tetrahedrons, hexahedrons and, and uh, pyramids. And there may also be several meshes in the same simulation. And then you can use interpolation to map the results between the different meshes. Elmer includes several different basis functions types. So in addition to the standard nodal elements, we have P elements up to 10th degree. And we also have edge and face elements or H div and H curl conforming elements as the mathematicians like to say. So all these are created from the basic, usually linear uh, nodal mesh. So you don't need to consider whether you use face on and edge elements when you prepare the mesh, but you can define it at the Elmer solver level only. So you, you can define it on the SIF and don't have to consider it before, before going to Elmer solver. So here is a summary of mesh generation recommendations for Elmer. So if you have a simple academic structured mesh, you can use Elmer grid. Uh, maybe a little bit more complicated academic uh, and unstructured mesh use gmesh and then export uh, into elmer format using uh, elmer grid uh, for complex more complicated geometries maybe starting from cad use salome either the plugin or uh, the unv format and then import via elmer grid for complex commercial, you could use GID. And don't forget about the internal meshing capabilities that may sometimes make today.